Hey, Mr. Stockman, do you know why the fat got mad at the oil? Uh, no. Why? Because it was giving it lipids. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, uh, welcome. This is Mr. Balsiger. This is Mr. Stockman. And this is about lipids. Otherwise known as fats and oils. Here are the three questions we want you to finish while you're watching this video. Bring them to class as evidence that you viewed this. Question number one. What elements make up fats and oils? And how does this compare to proteins and carbohydrates? Same first question as the other two videos, but now we're going to ask you to compare. What are the similarities differences? Question number two. Describe the difference between saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. And number three. Describe how the paper stack analogy relates to lipids. Further on in this video, we're going to uh, describe this analogy to you and have you complete it at home so that you can make the analogy. I think it'll make sense. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Have you ever tried spilling some oil into water before, Mr. Balsiger? Oh, I love doing that. I do that with my kids. All the time. Like, wow, is it going to mix together? No. no. It does not. So first, it's, it's made up of the atoms carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Cho. But mostly ch, C, and H. Very little O. The other property, which we just mentioned, is that it doesn't mix with water, meaning it is not soluble with water. No matter how much you stir it up, it won't, it won't dissolve in water. I've done something. Uh-oh. It's okay. We're good. Oh, uh-oh. We're in. We got this. No big deal. Yeah. Okay, so, anyways, um, yeah. most are not soluble in water. They don't mix. Mm, some examples of fats and oils. Butter, lard, bacon, grease, fish, oils, olive oil, canola oil, peanut oil. All examples of fats and oils. The difference between fats and oils has to do with their state at room temperature. So thinking about that list above, which of those are solid at room temperature? Well, and which are liquid at room temperature? Well, solids would be butter, lard. Uh, bacon grease, once it's cooled in the pan. Turns into a white solid. Yeah. The oils, well, they would be the liquid. So olive oil, canola oil, fish, fish oils? Sure, yeah. yeah. Okay, peanut oil. Those are all oils, liquid so, at room temperature. Butter, fat, solid. Room temperature. Oil, liquid, room temperature. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Why do we need it? Well, it's an important energy source. It has twice as much energy per gram as complex carbohydrates. So this guy has a lot of good storage of energy. He'll probably survive um, the winter. He could probably hibernate. Yeah. So a lot of people give fats and oils a, a bad rap. They don't, they don't realize how important they are. Incredibly important food source. If you didn't have them, we wouldn't function. The other is also looking at that, that walrus, thinking about how that layer of blubber, that layer of fat that's around the outside of him is keeping him warm so he can survive the frigid cold waters of the uh, Arctic. Look where he is, it's cold. And finally, the lipids, fats and oils, are important building blocks for other molecules in the body. Think. One really cool example is that there's the fatty acid that helps to make myelin, which is the sheath where um, neural information travels down through your nerve cells. We've talked about your brain being a network of these guys or gals communicating together and uh, Without fats, we couldn't build them. You wouldn't be able to think. And the more robust that little myelin sheath is, the more information that can travel through there. It's really important for your brain function. Triglycerides. 
is another name for what for fats and oils. And let's break that word down. Triglycerides. Tri means three. Like a tricycle. Yeah, so this fats and oils have three glycerides. Oh, sorry. Well, it's called a triglyceride because our main branching molecule here, the glycerol, has one, two, three fatty acids hanging off of it. Hey, look at that. There's three fatty acids. A fatty acid is a long chain of carbon with a whole bunch of hydrants clinging to it. And this molecule up here, the piece that attaches to the triglycerides, is the glycerol. They contain some oxygens, and that's where the oxygen component of fats exist. It's only, the oxygen's only in the glycerol. And these, the CHs, make up fatty acids almost entirely. Or maybe entirely. Uh, I think entirely. Yeah. yeah. So they come in many different lengths, and some are straight and some are bent. Look at this picture. We have a, a saturated fatty acid that is straight, and we have an unsaturated fatty acid that is bent. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that right now. So what are they saturated with? What are saturated fatty acids saturated with? Great question. Well, first off, if we see a bend in a fatty acid like this one here, it's bent, whereas this one is straight, we know that it has a double bond in the region of its kink or its bend. This one has no double bonds in it. And the double bonds prevent hydrogens from being hooked up to every carbon. So if you're looking at this, the every single carbon in the saturated fat or the saturated fatty acid, every single carbon is saturated with hydrogens. There's as many hydrogens as you can have. Here, the double bond allows these two carbons not to have hydrogens there. So thus it's unsaturated. So this is what causes the kink and also the difference between a saturated fat and an unsaturated fat. If you're looking at your dietary labels on your food, they're listed separately because we recognize saturated fats as being less healthy than unsaturated or even polyunsaturated fats. Is that true? Sounds good. So when, um, when we have this double bond action here, it causes the molecule to collapse and bend. In the direction of the, away from the hydrogens. It's toward where the hydrogens are missing. Or toward where the hydrogens are missing, yeah. So uh, in, in cap, in review, the fatty acids that aren't kinked are saturated with hydrogens, and we call them saturated fatty acids. And the ones that have a bend in them are called unsaturated because they're missing some of those hydrogens. Let's talk about solid versus liquid. This is where your analogy comes in. So if you take, go get a stack of paper, like three sheets of paper, and lay them one on top of the other. Each of those sheets of paper will represent um, a fatty acid. Okay. Or how about a, a whole unsaturated fat? And notice how straight they are and how nicely they all stack together. Sheets of paper. And that would be your saturated fat. These are saturated. And they're so tightly packed together and stacked so nicely, they would be solid at room temperature, like the blocks of butter we see there. Do you see how these are flat? The, the fatty acids are flat. They stack tight. Now, if you take the same sheets of paper and crinkle one up, and then the other... And then the third one, and then open them up and stack them one on top of the other. They just don't stack as nicely. There's more space between those unsaturated fats, and thus those molecules can move back and forth more easily, and thus they are liquid at room temperature. So this is your crinkly paper on the unsaturated and your straight paper here. Look how much more room this takes up. I got that. You can fix that. That's your base. Whether the fatty acids are bent or straight determines whether whether the triglyceride is solid or liquid at room temperature. 
Fills with straight fatty acids, stack easily, and solidify at room temperature. Make the analogy. That's question three. How do flat pieces of paper compare to crinkly pieces of paper? Which represents saturated and which represents unsaturated? So let's review your three questions. Number one, what elements make up fats and oils, and how does this compare to proteins and carbohydrates? Number two, describe the difference between saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. And number three, describe how the paper stack analogy relates to lipids. Thanks for tuning in. We'll, we uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Okay, bye-bye.